Namaste. So in yesterday's video in the Brahma Sutra series, we came across a mention of the doctrine of the five fires or the meditation on the five fires, Pancha Agni Vidya. So Vidya can be either knowledge or it can be directions for meditation. And so I started looking into this and it was quite the rabbit hole. <laughs> and so I hope I have boiled it down to something we can uh, present in a short video, but it's actually a very deep subject and one that everyone should know because it deals with the topic, the context that we are looking into now, which is the soul's departure from the body and the journey after death and where that journey takes us, how it goes and where it goes and why. So now let's begin from the first encounter with this Panchagni Vidya, which for me was this mysterious verse in Bhagavad Gita that I have never seen anyone explain adequately or in a satisfying way. What is that? Fire, light, daytime, the bright fortnight, Uttarayana, the six months of the northern movement of the sun. Departing in that solar path, the knowers of Brahman go to Brahman. Smoke, night, the dark fortnight, Dakshinayana, the six months of the southern movement of the sun. Taking this path, the yogi attaining the lunar light returns. Very mystical, huh? Now, most interpreters and commenters on Bhagavad Gita take this literally. And, and indeed, this is the popular understanding. But this is only the exoteric or external meaning of these verses. For example, at the end of the Battle of Kurukshetra, Bhishma, resting on a bed of arrows, withheld his death until the sun moved into the northern course, the Uttarayana. And usually this occurs at the time of Makar Sankranti, when the sun moves into Capricorn around January 14th or 15th. He was demonstrating that really uh, Shankaracharya points out in one of the previous commentaries on Brahma Sutra that he was doing this to demonstrate the power of his father's benediction, that he would not die until he himself willed it. It was not because he was not going to go to the spiritual world if he missed <laughs> or if he left his body during the southern movement of the sun. So this is a deep subject. Why is it deep? Because these terms, the smoke, the light, like that, don't refer to a specific time in the material world. Rather, they refer to a path that the soul travels after death. Let's look into that a little more. The key is found in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter 5, where it describes these five fires, the Panchagni Vidya, so let's look into this quote and see what we can understand from it. That world, O Gotama, is the fire. Of that, the sun is the fuel. The rays are the smoke. The day is the flame. The moon is the embers. The stars are the sparks. In this fire, the deities pour the libation of faith, and from this libation comes out King Soma. The deity Parjanya, Indra, O Gotama, 
is the fire. Of that, air is the fuel. The cloud is the soma. Lightning is the flame. The thunderbolt is the embers. The thunder is the sparks. Into this fire, the deities offer King Soma, and from this libation comes rain. The earth, O Gotama, is the fire. Of that, the year is the fuel. Akasha, space, is the smoke. Night is the flame. The quarters are the embers, and the intermediate quarters are the sparks. In that fire, the deities offer rain. Out of that libation comes food. The man, O Gotama, is the fire. Of that, speech is the fuel. Breath, the smoke. Tongue, the flame. Eye, the embers, and ear, the sparks. In that fire, the deities offer food. Out of that libation is produced the semen. The woman, O Gotama, is the fire. Of that, the male organ is the fuel, the intercourse, the smoke, the yoni, the flame, the penetration, the embers, the raptures, the sparks. Into this fire, the deities offer semen, and out of that libation is born the embryo. Thus, at the fifth libation, water comes to be called man, that fetus enclosed in the membrane, having lain within for ten or nine months, more or less, becomes born. Being born, he lives up to his lifespan. When he is dead, they carry him, as ordained, to the fire, whence he came and whence he sprang. Those who know this, and also those who meditate upon faith and penance in the forest, go to light, from light to day, from day to the bright fortnight, from the bright fortnight to the Uttarayana, those six months during which the sun rises northwards, from these months to the year, from the year to the sun, from the sun to the moon, from the moon to lightning. There lies a person, not human. He carries them to Brahman. This is the path of divinities. And those who, living in villages, meditate upon sacrifices and works of public utility and charity, pass on to smoke, from smoke to night, from night to the dark fortnight, from the dark fortnight to the Dakshinayana, those months during which the sun moves southwards. From there, they do not reach the year. From the months, they go to the region of the fathers, from the region of the fathers to Akasha, from Akasha to the moon. That is Soma, the king. That is the food of the deities. This the deities eat. So is this deep or what? These two paths, known in the Upanishads as the path of the sun and the path of the moon, lead to different destinations. The first path described is the path of light that leads to the sun, and then he is guided by a deity, not human, and that deity takes him to the spiritual world and is specifically described that this is the path that the sannyasis take. Those who have lived in the forest and meditated on devotion and detachment, whereas those who remain in the village, in householder life, attached to religious rites and so on, go to the moon, where they are again reborn. They return, he says. They return to the earth and take another human body and so forth. So herein are described two paths. The path of the enlightened ones goes higher and higher, and they receive divine help to enter the spiritual world. Whereas the path of those who are attached 
who remain in the cycle of birth and death go round and round, even though they may perform religious rites, because of their attachment, they stay in samsara. And they go up and down <laughs> to the heavenly planets, then back to earth, then again to the heavenly planets, and so on. This is why the Upanishads recommend, and Shankaracharya specifically recommends sannyas for those who want to realize Brahman. Because Brahman is realized not through rites, but through knowledge. Rites can only give us the heavenly planets. Why? Because they are external. They are performed in Jagrat consciousness. Jagrat is consciousness of the senses and the world, the external consciousness. And in that context, even so many spiritual practices can only yield a temporary relief, a temporary mukti from this world. Then one must return again to finish the process, which is done by realization of Brahma Vidya, Jnana, which is a form of knowledge or consciousness that is of the self, of Brahman, consciousness of consciousness. That's the difference. Consciousness of the senses leads to the senses, whereas consciousness of Brahman leads to the self. So that's the meaning of these five fires. Now, what is the meditation on these five fires? That is described in Brihadaranyakapanishad. So let's look into that section. This fire that is within a man and digests the food that is eaten is Vaishvanara. It emits this sound that one hears by stopping the ears thus. When a man is about to leave the body, he no more hears this sound. Brihadaranyaka 591. Those who conquer the worlds through sacrifice, charity, and austerity reach the deity of smoke. From him the deity of the night. From him the deity of the dark fortnight in which the moon wanes. From him the deities of the six months in which the sun travels southward. From them the deity of the world of the mains, and from them the moon. Reaching the moon, they become food. There the gods enjoy them as the priests drink the shining soma juice, gradually saying, as it were, flourish, dwindle. And when their past work is exhausted, they reach or become like this space, from space, air, from air, rain, and from rain, the earth. Reaching the earth, they become food grains. Then they are again offered as oblations in the fire of man, where they become semen, thence in the fire of the woman, whence they are born and perform rites with a view to go to other worlds. Thus do they rotate, while those others who do not know these two ways become insects and moths, and these frequently biting things, gnats and mosquitoes. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 6.2.15 But the self-realized soul has a different path after death. When a realized man departs from this world, he reaches the air, which makes an opening there for him like the hole of a chariot wheel. He goes upwards through that and reaches the sun, who makes an opening there for him like the hole of a tabor. He goes upwards through that and reaches the moon, which makes an opening there for him like the hole of a drum. He goes upwards through that and reaches a world free from grief and from cold. He lives there for eternal years. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 5.10.1 Meditation of the Five Fires That heavenly world, O Gotama, is metaphorically fire. The sun is metaphorically its fuel, the rays its smoke, the day its flame, 
the four quarters its cinder, and the intermediate quarters its sparks. In this fire the gods offer faith, liquid oblations in subtle form. Out of that offering, King Moon is born. A body is made for the sacrificer in the moon. Parjanya, the god of rain, O Gotama, is metaphorically fire. The year is its fuel, the clouds its smoke, lightning its flame, thunder its cinder, and the rumblings its sparks. In this fire the gods offer King Moon. Out of that offering, rain is produced. This world, O Gotama, is fire. The earth is its fuel, fire its smoke, the night its flame, the moon its cinder, and the stars its sparks. In this fire the gods offer rain. Out of that offering, food is produced. Man, O Gotama, is fire. The open mouth is its fuel, the vital force its smoke, speech its flame the eye its cinder, and the ear its sparks. In this fire the gods offer food. Out of that offering the seed is produced. Woman, O Gotama, is fire. In this fire the gods offer the seed. Out of that offering a man is born. He lives as long as he is destined to live. Then when he dies they carry him to be offered in the fire. The fire becomes his fire, the fuel his fuel, the smoke his smoke, the flame his flame, the cinder his cinder, and the sparks his sparks. In this fire the gods offer the man. Out of that offering the man emerges radiant. This indeed is excellent austerity that a man suffers when he is ill. He who knows as above wins an excellent world. This indeed is excellent austerity that a man after death is carried to the forest. He who knows as above wins an excellent world. This indeed is excellent austerity that a man after death is placed in the fire. He who knows as above wins an excellent world. Brihadaranyaka Panishad 5.11.1 the repetition in the final verse is to emphasize the point that this is truth. The world is a fire. Not only this world, the earthly world, but also the subtle world. Well, why do we say it's a fire? Well, for several reasons. One, it is a blaze. It is under the process of oxidation. If you take something, anything, a piece of wood, some food, or really anything, and you put it outdoors in the elements, it gets broken down, oxidized. It burns slowly. I'll never forget this. One time I was in Thailand, and I saw an old house which had been abandoned. And it was just sitting there out in the elements, weathering away to nothing. And it looked like burnt by the sun and the rain and the wind. And I realized it's being oxidized. It is actually burning. It's burning slowly, but still the same process is there. And it will be reduced to dust to ashes, to nothing. This is the fate of everything in this world, including the universe itself. Like when we put the Bhasma, the sacred ash, we chant this mantra, earth is ashes, water is ashes, fire is ashes, air is ashes, space is ashes. This whole world is due to be consumed in the fire of devastation, the Maha Pralaya at the end. So nothing here is permanent. It's all temporary, and for that reason, it's not our real home. Our actual nature is permanent, 
eternal, spiritual. So one should perform this meditation and meditate upon this deep, deep truth that everything is temporary in this world and that the only escape from it is to know the paths that lead to suffering and rebirth and avoid them and instead take the path that leads to light and eternal existence. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.